It's said around 500,000 people in the UK live with autism. The developmental disability affects how a person communicates with and relates to other people. It also affects how they make sense of the world around them. And autistic children like Eden who lives here can suffer immense anxiety every day. She can be physically aggressive, it's, it's very upsetting, no one wants to be hurt by their children, you know, and she's only tiny but she can flip out. Day to day life is based mainly on routines. She does like her timeline which is a series of symbols or pictures to just describe what's going to happen. Where is she on the spectrum? Eden's been assessed at being at the higher functioning end of the spectrum. She is very able in many areas but then some areas that she struggles in. As a parent I will do whatever I can to help her to achieve an independent life. And for parents like Claire additional help is at hand. Behavioural therapy is the norm for many autistic children but today I'm meeting a teacher whose new approach is pushing Eden's learning boundaries even further. All that and they're not even human. Meet Casper part of a new wave of humanoid robots used for the very first time in autism therapy. Generally children with autism have uh, difficulties in the areas of uh, communication, social interaction and imagination and fantasy. And we are targeting all three of these areas but primarily social interaction. So what makes Casper different? It is what we call a minimally expressive robot. We removed all of the uh, features that would make it very confusing for a child with, with autism. Autistic children have trouble reading human facial expressions and how they signify emotion. Casper's simplified face means that children can more easily learn that a smile means happy and a frown means angry. He also teaches them the consequences of their physical behaviour towards other children. One example of a positive tactile interaction would be this. If you were to hit the robot, the robot indicates that this was a, a behavior uh, that can hurt. So we want them to reflect on the consequences of what they do. I come to Trax, a specialist school in Hertfordshire, where Eden's about to put Casper to the test through a series of games. Well, we do imitation games. Yeah. So one child controls the robot by pressing the, the buttons. Okay. The other child copies the robot. So they play together in an imitation game through the mediation of the robot. Today, Ben is going to play the role of the other child. He's hiding. I'm hiding too. Eden hits the buttons which control Casper's expressions. Then Ben mimics to show the same expression on a human face. What is face now? Tell me, tell me. Sad. Sad. And Ben's getting results. And now what is this? Happy. Happy. This is the first time she's starting to play directly with me. Instead of just playing with the robot, for me, this was a big step what we, what we did so far. I mean, I, I'm really surprised, I'm really taken by it, because up to now I haven't had this direct interaction. And it's not just Eden. Other children, like Ronnie, are learning too. And happy. Happy. And the parents are noticing a change in their behaviour. He knows the difference between happy and sad now, and like the different facial features and everything. So before he was always bashing other children and everything. It's calmed him down. It has calmed him down a hell of a lot, yeah. I would love to have Casper at home. It's hard to say for certain what is the most effective treatment for autism because everybody's condition is quite unique. But one thing's for sure. Where do you want to go? We need to go to our school. The social interaction skills taught by Casper offers real hope for Eden and many others with autism. And thanks to Eden and her mum, Claire. Good news, of course, Eden is doing so well that she'll be joining her friends at the local school in September. Hello, Eden, if you're watching. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Dr Mark Porter is here with Casper. With Casper. Yeah, now, I'm, I'm sure lots of viewers out there, as soon as they saw Casper, would have initially thought, that's quite a scary robot. But when it's explained, you can really understand why it's so sexy. You need to look at Casper through the eyes of a, of a child with autism. And, yeah. and they would look at you and all the verbal cues and nuances and expressions that you have. And it's too much. It's overload. It's scary and they, they probably ignore or avoid you. Casper, on the other hand, is simple and they, that attracts them. And, and so he's designed to be exactly what he is. To them, 
uh, to a child with autism, he's far more attractive than I am. And we need to remember that when we're dealing with these children. Often you use the normal cues that you would when you're dealing with your four-year-old. Yeah, yeah. Hello and tickle and all this sort of stuff. And that's enough to, to cause a lot of anxiety sure. in, a, in a child with autism. Has it made you think differently? Yeah, watching the, the film. Do, yeah. I think the interesting thing about watching the film for me was watching Eden interact with the robot and Ben, who was operating the robot. I would never have guessed that, that she had autism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and she just looked like a normal child playing there. And that's often something you don't see with children with autism. They do. It, it is very different when you see them. She mm -hmm. seemed to be reacting really well to the mm -hmm. robot. Um, but Steve, you were saying that you have quite a lot of letters from parents with autistic children. Yeah, I, I knew nothing about autism until I started doing a, a kids' wildlife series a couple of years ago. And it's been totally overwhelming, the amount of response we get from parents and teachers saying the child was very unresponsive and all of a sudden they've switched on mm. to animals. And it's become something they become obsessive about and really find it easy to relate to. I mean, for me, it was totally overwhelming getting that kind of feedback. And, and uh, Dr. Mark, if, if for all the parents that are out there that are slightly worried that their children might have autism, what are the signs? I mean, it's a wide spectrum, isn't it? That's it is. I mean, I think the first thing to point out is when they're very young that you just notice something's not right about little Amanda or little Johnny. And he's different from previous children and other children. Um, they can be late delaying delaying with de language development they don't interact very well with you or other children mm. as they get older we hear some of the sort of signs that you saw there that, that they're loners that they have obsessive routines that they're just not very good at reading situations that you and I would take for granted okay I guess the first part of call is to go and see you yeah health visitor and GP if, you've, if you're worried you must make sure your doctor and health visitor knows you are okay well thanks ever so much indeed